Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Says, I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. The Green New Deal is out, you guys. And that's not the AOC version, the blunder we already saw, but the Bernie Sanders version. So should we call it Green New Deal after next? Next Green New Deal? I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. But it does waste no time or effort, really, in exposing what it is right from the get-go. Soul-crushing socialism. Or maybe you'd rather call it communist utopia, I don't know. But it's a doozy. The climate crisis is not only the single greatest challenge facing our country, it is also the, our single greatest opportunity to build a more just and equitable future. But we must act immediately. Climate change is a global emergency. The Amazon rainforest is burning. Greenland's ice shelf, ice shelf is melting. And the Arctic is on fire. That's right, the Arctic is on fire. And Amazon rainforests... So was this just written in the last two weeks, or did they just add this in because it's topical? Of course, that's not even climate change related, though. As we know, it's farmers illegally trying to clear land for their cattle and other things of that nature. Nothing to do with rising temperatures at all, because forest fires are quite normal. It does go on, however. People across the country and the world are already experiencing the deadly consequences of our climate crisis. As extreme weather events like heat waves, wildfires, droughts, floods, and hurricanes upend entire communities, ecosystems, economies, and ways of life, as well as endanger millions of lives. Communities of color, working class people, and the global poor have borne and will bear this burden disproportionately. That's right, hurricanes, floods, droughts will affect non white people the most. How? How do you ask? It doesn't say. Of course, it's either saying that somehow all non-white people are in poor areas or climate change has some way of knowing where non-white people live and affects them disproportionately. Somehow only in places where it's non-white people, the natural disasters happen. Fascinating. Really learning a lot here. We must guarantee health care, housing, and good paying jobs to every American, especially those to those who have been historically excluded from economic prosperity. There it is, you guys. That didn't take long, did it? Free housing, amazing jobs, even for the poorest people. No qualifications? No problem. You're hired. It's an amazing, an amazing thing. Then it goes on to do what AOC did in her Green New Deal. That was compare it to World War II and talk about how amazingly simple it is for us all to come together and, you know, just completely change everything around. It was horrific. A lot of people died, but, you know... It's the same thing. All you have to do is force everyone in the country to build houses, retrofit all the buildings, pay higher taxes, in just a few short years, communist utopia. That's exactly how it works. How much does it cost, you ask? Why just $16.3 trillion, $1.6 trillion per year, or about 37% of the annual federal budget? Don't worry about the spelling mistakes in there. No need to proofread, you guys. Now, I know what you're saying. Wait a minute. Isn't Bernie's health care... Plan for all, free health care for all, $3.2 trillion a year. Yes, it is. Now, won't that leave us half a trillion dollars in the hole? Well, don't worry, because we're going to do more than that. We're going to double your taxes to make up for it. Good start. Just a great start. Let's see what's next, shall we? 20 million jobs, good paying jobs, union jobs with strong benefits and safety standards. That's about 2 million jobs per year on average. Sounds actually quite average, 2 million jobs per year. But don't worry, there's plenty more money to make up for everything else after that. So after we fire everyone from their evil fossil fuel jobs, we will guarantee 5 years of a worker's current salary, housing assistance, job training, health care, pension, pension support, and priority job placement for any displaced worker. Now, according to my research, that's about 2 million jobs per year from the fossil fuel industry that will be getting the same pay, free housing, and jobs priorities over other people. So, on one hand, 2 million people will lose their jobs, but we're also adding 2 million jobs per year. Just nod along, everybody, and pretend that this is making any sense, and wait, it gets even better. How about $20 billion per year to the other countries for climate change also? China and India will be very happy about that. But don't worry, you guys. This plan will pay for itself in just 15 years. It will pay for itself. 
We'll sue the oil companies and we'll tax them more, even though we fired them all and we still pay them all. We'll get taxes from all the new jobs, even though we fired just as many people in a shorter period of time. We'll put less money into Social Security, even though we say Trump is evil whenever he does that. We don't need it anymore because of our two million more jobs. No one will ever be unemployed again, you guys. Again, don't worry. We will save $70 trillion over the next 80 years. An 80-year plan, how can it fail? Just, I have no idea. How can this, this is foolproof. Seriously, just search the page for dollar signs, start looking up the figures and tell me if it adds up, it adds up to you. Tell me if this is real math. 526 billion for a new energy grid. 2.18 trillion to retrofit homes and businesses. 964 billion to quote, electrify homes and businesses. 2 trillion vehicle grants. 680 billion for vehicle trade-ins, 85 billion for um, for charging stations, 400 billion for buses, 216 billion for trucks, 300 billion for transit, and 607 billion for high-speed rail. It all sounds so very wonderful, you guys. You got to give them credit, though. They went into more detail than Ocrazio Cortez did. So maybe instead of a ninth grader writing it, we've got an eleventh grader writing it. Now, I don't get paid by Republicans or fossil fuel industry giants to say any of this. It's just fantasy land. That's just all it is. The plan is to create a reasonable amount of jobs over 10 years while still paying the same amount of people for five years that you fired. So right away, you've eliminated five years of your plan. So we can knock it in half or we can just say one million jobs per year. That's actually half the amount that Trump's creating. That's less than Obama created. It's half of what uh, Trump is creating, not to mention the other $2.3 trillion of the federal budget that we need to run the United States government. So now we're up to losing $2.7 trillion per year. But then again, we are doubling taxes, taxes at $1.7 trillion in federal taxes. If you could somehow double that, which is probably impossible, we're still looking at 100 or sorry, $1 trillion in the hole. So now you've doubled taxes on people without guaranteeing double the salary, which means people are losing money. You're taxing corporations, which means they will either double their prices or just leave. And all these oil companies that you call evil will just take their business elsewhere because there's no business for them in the country anyway, since you put an end to all these dreaded fossil fuels. Put this all together and what do you have? total economic meltdown and poverty and that's if everything goes according to plan <laughs> except for who of course well the new energy companies will just replace the evil oil and fossil fuel executives with the beautiful and loving wind energy and solar energy executives no greed they're just good people because they do different businesses it's the same thing he's been complaining about this whole time he just wants to replace who the evil executives are that are making all the money, but he somehow expects them to stay and do business with him when they're doubling their taxes, tripling their taxes, putting their effective rate to over 70-80%. No matter what he says, it's not going to work in this situation. Now, don't tell that to a lot of the online outlets out there. This is being heralded by some. Rest easy, because we're going to save the universe. Gizmodo says Bernie Sanders' $16 trillion climate plan is nothing short of a revolution. The Verge, Bernie Sanders' Green New Deal is the most progressive in the race. Or we have some website called Common Dreams. Game changer, Sanders unveils Green New Deal plan detailing 10-year mobilization to avert climate change catastrophe, catastrophe, creating 20 million jobs. This is a pivotal moment in history of America, and really... In the history of humanity. Not excited yet, you guys? Well, never fear. Bernie Sanders is here. We need a president who has the courage, the vision, and the record to face down the greed of fossil fuel executives and the billionaire class who stand in the way of climate action. We need a president who welcomes their hatred. <laughs> welcomes their hatred, all right. Bernie will lead our country to enact the Green New Deal and bring the world together to defeat the existential threat of climate change. That's right, you guys. Bernie Sanders, China, President Xi, Putin, Russia, they're all coming together to save the world. And you can do your part, too. We're just rebuilding every house, every railway, every road, every power plant, a new electrical grid, replacing all the vehicles. Aren't you ready? Doesn't it sound just so simple? Why not?
Why can't we do it? It's just as easy as World War II. That was a breeze. Nothing bad happened there. And if you don't want to, God bless you. Well, a socialist government would never, never ever force people to do work against their will, would they? 